Hey guys, in this problem we're looking for the wavelength and frequency of light given all this information. This problem is actually a little bit trickier than your typical double slit interference problem because the information we're given is not so much related to one specific fringe, but more so the difference between two fringes. So the math that we're going to want to use is going to be a little trickier. Let's, let's actually draw a picture of what's going on just to make this a little clear. So let's say this is our sheet where the two slits are. This, this represents the two slits. And then there is a sheet, or the screen where the light is falling, some distance away. It says 6.50 meters away. I'm just going to call that L. Okay. So the light is passing through the slits and then coming down to hit the center. And then, of course, there, there are going to be other angles at which other bright fringes are hitting the screen. We're going to say that these vertical distances between the center and each fringe are going to be called x's. So this is x1 and this is x2. And the problem talks about the fringes being 8 centimeters apart from one another. So what we're actually given is the difference between these two x's. So we're given what I'm going to call delta x, or x sub 2 minus x sub 1. All right, but now let's talk about how we can actually use this information to solve the problem. So the main formula for two-slit interference with bright, with bright fringes is d sine theta equals m lambda, where d is the distance between the slits that the light's passing through, theta is the angle between the center and each fringe, m is the order of each fringe, so for example, this one is 1 because it's closer to the center, this one's 2, etc. And lambda is the wavelength of the light. Now before we can use this formula, there are a few things we need to make clear first. This sine theta term is kind of useless to us right now because we're not given any angles. But what we can do is assume that the angles are relatively small. Because, because our distance L is 6.5 meters away, that, that's pretty far, and the distances between the fringes are only a few centimeters apart. So we can expect that our angle theta is going to be pretty small. And what's nice about that is that if theta is really small, then we can assume, and, and this is a, a common assumption you can you generally make, that if theta is really small, then you can assume that sine theta is approximately equal to the tangent of theta. If you want, you can play around with it in your calculator and test it out, and you'll see that for really, really tiny angles, sine theta almost always has almost the exact same value as the tangent of theta. And the reason why that is helpful for us is because if we take a look at our diagram, we can see that the tangent of theta, and remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if we look at our diagram, we can see that the tangent of theta is going to be equal to either of our x values, x1 or 1 or 2, divided by L. So if we rewrite our equation using that, so dx over L equals m lambda, now this equation entirely consists of variables that we have information on. Only thing is, we don't actually have the exact value for x. We are only given a difference between two x values. So let's rewrite this equation to solve it for x. So x is going to be equal to, uh, and then I'll multiply both sides of this equation by L, and divide both sides of the equation by d. So that, it, that becomes m lambda L, all divided by d. So we are given the distance between two different x values, x sub 1 and x sub 2. So let's write formulas for each of these two x's. So let's say x sub 1, go, going off of this formula that we just wrote in red, x sub 1 is equal to the lambda, the wavelength, multiplied by some m value. The problem doesn't specifically say it's m1 or m2, but as we'll see in a moment, it doesn't actually matter. So let's assume it's any m value and go from there. Times L divided by D. And then X2 is, again, going off the same formula. This is equal to lambda multiplied by 
m plus 1. And the reason why I'm writing m plus 1 is because, again, this distance we're given is talking about two adjacent fringes. So whatever m value our x1 is, our x2 is just one m value above that. Anyways, our delta x that we are given is x2 minus x1. This is equal to lambda m plus 1 times l divided by d, all minus lambda ml divided by d. If we distribute the parentheses in the first term, that's lambda m l over d plus lambda just l over d minus lambda m l over d. So we can see these two terms are equal and they just cancel out. So our whole term, our whole expression, delta x, is equal to lambda l over d. So now we've simplified our equation in such a way that we don't need to know any specific x value, just the difference between those two. And since we're looking to solve the, the wavelength, now we'll just rewrite the equation to solve for lambda. So lambda is equal to d delta x divided by lambda, or divided by l. Now we just put our values into a calculator. For d, we're given d as 0 0.48 millimeters. So to convert that to meters, we just times 10 to the power of negative 3 meters. Multiplied by the difference between the two x's, that's 8.5 centimeters, or 8.5 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meters. All divided by the distance between the sheet and the screen, which is 6.5 meters. We put this into a calculator, and we find a wavelength of about 6.3 .3 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. And so that is the wavelength of our light. But the problem doesn't stop there. We're also asked to find the frequency. Fortunately, finding the frequency is pretty easy once we know the wavelength, because a common formula for the frequency of light is equal to the speed of light divided by its wavelength. So we just take the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second, and divide it by the wavelength we just found, 6.3 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. Put that into a calculator, and we find a frequency of about 4.8 times 10 to the power of 14 hertz. And that is the answer to this problem. So that is all for now. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please subscribe or share this channel with your friends to help me out making more videos like this. Anyway, that's all for now. Hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.